set it up so that uh, Tokala kills uh, El- the new Eldrin. We frame him for it, send him to jail, and sell his chain sword to fire to finance the pirate ship. Right? Agreed. Okay. Disagree. Can't kill the new Eldrin. He's a star. No, I'm just kidding. Well, uh, I clicked record right before Nomcath said that, so that's now the start of this recording. Perfect. <laughs> nice. No secrets. It's all out in the open. Yep. So call it, enjoy that. <laughs> Wants to use it to catch up later. Okay. You guys. Uh, well, gosh, you're still at the scene of the crime, aren't you? Yep. Yep. With tentacles come through, they don't even know anything's happened. Wow. Just that tentacles are going through the door. And maybe heard a whimper. I knock. Yeah. You knock even though black tentacles are floating in and out of the door. You occasionally see them, but then they kind of recede. And everything is very quiet. Is the door locked? Don't think so. You heard it slant or it's it's shut, but you didn't hear it lock. All right. Uh, well, we open the door. Eldrin, uh, are you okay? Total silence. Boop. Even if I pull if I pull out the flashlight, nothing, no light in here. Yeah, it's it's absorbing it. Uh, anybody who wants to roll spellcraft can roll it. Eldrin, roll spell. Oh wait. Oh wait. Oh, sad. Yeah, Olbrin, you know that what you guys are staring down is a deeper darkness effect. Whereas ambient light level is lowered by two steps, so past dark vision, even dark vision can't see through it. Um, it's like darkness, but even creatures with dark vision cannot see within the spell's confines. Alfred, you don't have anything that will penetrate this. Uh, no, I don't. I don't have daylight or dispel magic. Prepared. Okay. Well, uh, this doesn't look good. Aldrin's in there somewhere, maybe, still alive, and there's something with tentacles. So, what do you want to do? Uh, Alfred, uh, brace the door so it doesn't close behind me, okay? All right. And I'm basically going to uh, get low and start feeling around. Uh, Nomcat. senses on alert. Nomcat, let me get you, let me give you, uh, uh, invisibility. Good. Uh, Toby, do I have a macro for that? Good. I thought we did one. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Though. G-I-N-V, if you want to do greater. That makes sense. Okay. So, Nomcat is greater in viz. I'm logging back in. I'm switching computers. Okay. Roll me a stealth, Dom, unless you're just going to dash in. Uh, I don't know it well enough. So, and I am assuming that Eldrin is somewhere nearby. Okay. Because th- this is all within like 30 seconds or so. So. And he's not responding, so I have a bad feeling about this. And that is with invisibility uh, <laughs> tagged, so... Good lord. Okay. <laughs> you step in, you are completely surrounded by darkness. That's what I'm saying. I'm down... Uh, I'm basically crouched down and feeling around the floor. Okay. And I'm feeling with my hands, but my ears are, are, are wide open, my eyes are wide open, I'm... Senses are on, are on 11. Well, for a any, perception you know, check. You know, for any movement or whatever, as I try to figure out what the heck happened to Eldrin. Nomcat is down on his hands and feet, 
feeling with his fingertips. You can hear every time Ulfred shifts his weight behind you or Tokala does, the heavier people. You can feel just the slightest clunk in the floor. You hear it and feel it. Ahead of you is such oppressive silence and lack of vibration. You know something is there. Something attacked Eldrin. But whatever it is, it's not moving. There's no vibration or air movement at all. The room is all right. too still. Yeah. Um, I said I'm feeling around. Uh, I move. I'll move like about five feet or so into the room, and I'm I'm trying to find Eldrin. Okay. You reach forward and your fingers brush against something. It feels like fur or hair, and you realize it is the top of Eldrin's head. He's laying on right. his back right in front of you. I go far enough down to grab a handful or a handful of clothing or the, the, the strap on that stupid, uh, that weird armor of his. And so I can start dragging him out. Okay. Roll. Let's see. We're going to go like this. And we're going to enter combat. Takala. Perfect Takala roll. And let's see. McInnes, you're watching. Nomcath feels a slight rush of air on his face when you start to drag Eldrin back, like something just lunges towards you. Uh, uh, you're close to the to door. The yeah. Uh, I gotta get Eldrin out of there. Uh, roll me a strength check and just don't roll completely terrible. What you're doing is not that hard. Oh, that's great. All right, uh, you can move a whole square while dragging him. All right, I'm moving. I'm literally going backwards okay. and trying to get him out past the door. Okay. Go ahead and hop your token back. Yeah. Uh, probably here. Yeah. yeah. You drag. The body of Eldrin out. He is completely still. Um, next up is Olbrin. You see him. You see Nomcath drag Eldrin's body out of the darkness. The darkness is still pouring out of the room like it's light. Um, well, actually, they just see a dragging body because I'm greater invisible. <laughs> what would you like to do on your turn? All right, whatever it is, we got to kill it. Ooh, you put an extra letter in there, sir. H A S T. And it can't. There we go. We gotta kill it. Whatever the hell it is. All right. That. Let me put haste buff on you. And he's above on Tokala. Poof. All right. Okay, Nomcath. Uh, remember, I have the the rogue bullshit, so uh, it's standard armor for me. It's not touch. Right, right. Um, so what is your that, AC? That's not going to help. It's not going to help much. It's still only twenty-two. <laughs> so I think just the last one missed me. But okay, so this first one, you want a one on this first one hits which is 10 points of damage second one you want a one second one hits this is the invisibility but, mischance but does not does not confirm so 
Uh, I have the second so one is it, not being a crit. The third one. That's like what I'm saying. The, the second one. Oh. The third I one I have. There's attacks crit. above that. I think you're looking at like the multiple. Yeah, I didn't mean to trigger the multiple. Sorry. Um, okay, I'm just going on, on each single click. So this, this. You want a one. Jesus, it's hit you every time. One, two, three, and this will not confirm no matter what. Jeez, four times. Jesus, that's my luck. So what's the total damage here? Because there's a whole bunch of... I'm going to total it up. I'll total it up for okay. you. You take... 25. You take 35. And then unfortunately... Uh, you can sneak attack invisible targets, can't you? You just suffer uh, mischance. Cannot, cannot sneak attack me. Can't sneak attack. Unless, it has to have... Unless the rogue level's higher than mine. It is not. Okay. Domcath, you feel these attacks coming and twist your body as much as you can using your rogue knowledge to not expose any vital areas and you are slashed and torn and every time one of these tentacles hits you it feels at the same time like it's rubbery and soft but then when it touches you it like rips itself away and razor it feels like it's got razor blades in the rubbery texture that slash you as it pulls away it's very strange and yeah it tried to rip out your jugular it tried to go for the big arteries in your legs, it like went for vital areas and you just prevented it from killing you. Actually, I may be misremembering. I may be getting my other rogue mixed up. Well, this I just saw in the, about the sneak attack. But it does say a rogue cannot sneak attack while striking a creature with concealment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's in the core rogue. That's what I thought. Yeah. Rogue. So it's just kind of flailing at you with these tentacles, but you can feel yeah. the potential for precision strikes out of it. And just a glance at Eldrin's body dragging him out of the light, you notice that he just took a bunch of perfect shots. It's right there. It's right there. All right. Um... He's going to. He's going to provoke an AOO, but Takala runs into the darkness. Let's see. AOO versus Takala. That will hit. And we'll get sneak attack. Okay. And Tokala will do what he does. He wants a one. Tokala wants a one. Holy fuck, he hits. You guys hear Tokala run in there, and you hear the chainsaw fire up. And he just starts sawing. You you hear Namkath, the clear sound of the tentacles hitting him. He's definitely being attacked in return. But he uh, he laid into it. What is that? That's what that is. Okay. Okay. McGinnis. CIFK. I think he. Oh no, he's here. He's doing stuff. No, we don't no, hear we you, at the moment, sir. His microphone has betrayed him again. Yet again. You're good. No rush. His microphone needed some quiet time. Would Namkath have died there yep. if he could be sneak attacked? Yeah, I mean, that yeah, took me down 15. below 50%. Yeah. I'm at 19 out of 54. 
Yeah, good thing, man, that you got that invisibility. Yeah, that was definitely good. Yeah. I thought I heard McGinnis for a second. I did hear him. You can hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we can now. Okay. Man, every time it's like... <laughs> can it just work every time? That would be... Discord, yeah. If the mic is ever disconnected or unavailable for a second, Discord switches to something else. Yeah, okay. All right, so here I am. And the question is, can I even... Do it. Can I shoot anything? I mean, I'm just shooting into the. Don't blackness. have a. You don't have a target, but you do have a grenade yeah. launcher. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking honestly, you would just, you know, throw a, throw a, acid bomb in there or something. Hell yeah. Or acid flask. Because I can't. I can't shoot anything, right? I'm just shooting. You can't. Yeah, you I'm, would be. You would, not hit anything. Yeah, you can't make a ranged attack. On, on a PC. He just fumbles around, like, God damn it, and whips out an acid flask, steps forward, and just sees if he can splash it in there and hear All something right. squeal in pain. Uh, I'm going to make a ranged. Oh, here we go. Ooh, wherever you want it. I saw tentacles, right? You saw them recede okay. into the darkness, and you heard... Okay. Give me a perception check. Pretty good. McGinnis, you know that Tokala ran in at an angle. He ran in headed southeast. And by your, your ear, even with the echo of this tower and all this background noise, McGinnis' acoustic sense of where things are is pretty good at this point. He's been in a lot of fights. You're pretty sure Tokala's right around here, this blob. You think the enemy is somewhere northeast of Tokala. Okay, he just winds up and try to, tries to put it here. Okay. Then that's where it goes. Roll damage. Okay. Uh, do you get a... You don't get a reflex versus that, do you? I don't think so. What is, is it? Is it an it's an acid flask, yeah. Okay. Let me see. Splash weapon. Oh, you throw it as a splash weapon. Yeah. I think if it's splash, it does have a reflex, but let me see. Splash does one point. Range of a minute, 10 feet. Well, I guess not. I didn't. I was just reading about splash weapons. I didn't see reflex on it. Okay. Um, it's not going to do nearly as much damage as you hope, but um, Ulfred, give me a perception check, or what are you doing, and then tell me if you. Well, I could hit it with a burning hand, but also um, Takala seemed to have some luck with the chainsaw. You heard him hit it. And you Can heard I his signature. <laughs> Can I five foot step into the darkness? You can. Or, all right, I think I'm going to swing wildly in front of me. Well, five foot step into kind the of, darkness and then roll me a perception like check. Down here. You can five foot step right here. If you want two swings. Oop. I meant down here. Yeah, you got it. Roll me a perception check for him. Not bad. You hear uh, a sound that you're pretty familiar with this. What is it that gives Ulfred his acid resistance? My uh, domain. One of my domains. That's what I thought. You're very familiar with it. Handling it the sound of it, the feel of it, the burn, how to make it, how to neutralize it. And you are hearing sizzling and popping all around you. And you're hearing it, you're hearing the sound of acid as it reacts with like dust and dirt and grime on the floor around you, but you're also hearing it burn flesh. And that is directly east of you. 
right? I say McGinnis, uh, acid won't be effective. Um, I hear acid splashing around in here. You think it is being effective? You think you're actually going to swing at where you hear burnt flesh? All righty. Okay. All right. Roll. Let's see. Do you want to do your rolls here? I'll do them if you prefer. I can do them. Okay. So roll me one d two. You want a one. And you want. Oh, that's a hit. And roll for your haste attack. That also has the potential to hit. Ah. That misses. Okay. Let's see. Okay, you slam into something, and you feel a tentacle wrap around your shield and another around your shield, and you tug on it backwards with your, your shield arm, and this sort of tells you where the trunk of whatever these tentacles are attached to is, and you just swing as hard as you can for that. And you miss two times, but one time you connect with something, and you hear what sounds like a woman's voice go, ah! Found her. Sorry, my wife came in. No problem. So I am going to you know, now that I've got Eldrin out of there. Why is why is this thing working? Can I move here? And since everyone's flailing around in this general area, I'm mm -hmm. going to assume... Um, can I... Oops. Dang. Is yeah, there... Can I find a footstep through here, this direction? Yeah, I'm fine with it. Okay. So, since, like I said, since everyone's flailing around in this general area, I shall join the flailing. <laughs> and... Full attack. Ooh. All right. Roll me 1d2. You want a 1. I only hit on one of them? Holy crap. Uh, no, you hit on two of them. You can do it twice. Ooh, you hit. You hit. Nice. All right, so uh, on one of my sneak attacks, uh, since I... Well, let me actually, let me ask you this. Um... Is sneak with the invisibility. Yeah, you can't sneak attack. Oh, yep, you're right, you're right, you're right. So I can't even do that. So, yep. Okay, you, never mind then. You slash with the daggers and connect with something. You f you do the same thing that Ulfred did. You feel a tentacle s swipe past. You get a piece of it with the dagger, and you just lunge for whatever is at the root of that tentacle. And you hear a... <laughs> and there is a thud... And the room goes very quiet. Well, as quiet as any room in the Choking Tower ever is. I think I might have got her. Eldrin, I must see to him. Eldrin. Eldrin, get, up, get your ass up, buddy. That will heal Nomcalf and Tokala. Anybody Get else? Get up, And Nomcath and Tokala noticed that the incredible dark darkness effect slowly fades and the room slowly returns to normal light. And then you can see. It's still sort of foggy and cloudy in here. But there is a strange creature. It has the torso and sort of face of a beautiful woman. But its hair is a bunch of a mass of small black leathery tentacles. Her arms stretch out into four or five different major branches, at least four of which look strong enough to to attack. And her legs just sort of 
meld into shadows until they look like a, a tattered bunch of black cloth laying on the ground underneath her. The hell is that abomination? Who bloody cares? Eldrin, he's dead. She done tore Eldrin up something fierce. I don't think he's coming back. He doesn't Gosh. have a pulse. God damn it. And we used up the scroll for Takala. Nah, no, that's a bad thing. Uh, I'll just... That darn fool, he's always charging around, poking buttons, opening doors, poking his nose in places. It's bound to happen. Gods be damned. Who wants his wallet? It was a lot. <laughs> I, I, I had to. <laughs> he does have a lot of shit on him. Actually, his wallet, he's, he's not wearing pants, so he has to go find his pants. No, I thought he was fully clothed. By the... <laughs> yeah, he was. Okay. Yeah, there was like a whole, thing. no, there was like a whole series, like four or five sessions where you were just stark naked. <laughs> yeah, no, he's clothed. Completely unashamed about it, too. How can one think of money at a time like this? Our companion has is deceased. <sighs> it was a joke, you know. Light fingered rogue and hands holds up his hands, twiddles his fingers a little bit. Oh, a little humor to lighten things a little bit. My family does it all the time. Somewhere the ghost of Eldrin is like screaming, but like, what about when I talk shit about the Rat Woman? <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> I just remember Namkath got really pissed off whenever Eldrin made fun of Takala. There's a difference. Eldrin has such an abrasive personality that there was no give. Oh, he's so unlikable. <laughs> yes, he was. Yeah. He was a he strange was fella. Found him in a darn container in the middle of a foggy wasteland full of undead beings. Are you even sure if he was real? Here, another dark place. Maybe we imagined him. I mean, we've we've seen things in containers before, and they weren't real. Maybe, maybe he wasn't even real. Maybe he was the alien he was seeking. <sighs> Guess he'll never find the answers he was seeking. Yeah. He doesn't have any family. He doesn't have any kin. The hell of a thing. The real aliens were the friends we made along the way. Yep. <laughs> uh, this is going to sound weird, but I think it's the kind of an idea for uh, him to get a little bit of revenge. When we're done with this place, I know we're going to blow it up. <laughs> Let's put him in the room with the Silex. Oh, God. I mean, that way it's like him getting one last strike against the tower that took him out, you know? And he would be blown straight to the heavens that way, where he wants to be. be the, exactly. Be the first elf to ever go to Valhalla. <laughs> there is a certain poetic nature to it, I must admit. I mean, obviously, if we knew his family or anything, I, we, I would say, you know, make sure we got his body back to his family, but I, I never really heard specifics... So oh, man, man could not be more removed from his natural environment than he is already. Yeah, so uh, at the very least, we can make sure he goes out with uh, one last rude gesture to the place that took him out, right? He did say to Olvrin a long time ago at the campfire that he was like an outcast himself from his uh, elven wand. So those of yeah, you, everybody has dark vision, right? No, I have low light. Everyone with dark vision can roll a perception check. McGinnis has got it. Uh, but where he's standing? Yeah, you can see it. McGinnis, this lady's body is disintegrating or shrinking, shriveling. Hey, look at that. It's moving. Something's happening. 
The little tattered remnants of black cloth are pulling into the center mass, and it's just forming sort of a little pile of what looks like... Now, a minute ago, it looked like her dead body, and now it looks like a black cloak that's just been thrown on the ground. What the hell does that mean? Take a look at that. Anyone know what this thing was? You ever heard of something like this? No. Olbrin hasn't. I'm gonna carefully move forward and poke the, the pile with uh, one of my daggers. You hit something or some things that are hard in this pile of what looks like cloth. The cloth is so black and so perfectly clean and black, you can't actually distinguish like ripples or the, the surface of it. It just looks like darkness. I, I want to try and like get my knives under it and see if I can flip the cloth over or away or whatever. Okay. As you move it, it feels heavier than it looks. Like maybe it looks like light silk cloth. It flows like silk, but then it weighs like leather. And you feel some objects clanking around inside it. Small objects. But nothing like a body kind of? Oh, no. Or... Okay. At this point, it's the size of a purse. Okay. And it was whipping tentacles with reach, you know, a minute ago. Yeah. This is weird. Um, uh, Ulbrin, you got a uh, detect magic? Yeah, I detect magic on it. You feel a instant spike of massive readings from it. You, Holy shit, there's a lot of magic there. You pick up just massive readings of multiple realms. Yeah, I think there's I could... all kinds of magic there, Numcast. Be careful, uh, but... All right. Uh, guys, clear out the room. Copy that. Uh, I've got the biggest chance of dodging back if something blows up. I want you guys out of range just in case. I don't want to see that thing come back. All right, so once they're, you know, 20 feet away or so, then I'll, uh, I'll actually grab the cloth with my hand. You know, take a half, you know, grab the cloth, take a half second, see if anything reacts, and then lift it up. It feels as cold to your hand as ice, but it's soft, so it feels sort of like barely melting ice cream in your hands, but it doesn't stick to you. It doesn't feel solid. Can I pick it up, or is it, or, or is my hand kind of going through it? Oh, uh, there's stuff in it. It's like a cloth with some objects that are not tangled in it, but sort of stuck to it. Alright, I'll start fiddling around to see if I can find those objects and see if I can grab them. Okay. You fish out a ring and two strange bracelets. Okay. Okay. Once I get those out, can I actually, like, pick up this cloth and, like, shake it out? Is it, like, a yeah. cloak or a robe or something like that? It looks like, like a, black, a black cloak. All right. Uh, well, I'll come out. Well, this is kind of interesting. Um, here, Olbrin, maybe you can figure out what these are. And I hand over the ring and the bracelets, and I'm, but I'm still holding on to the cloak. And this is, like, something wearable, at least. Okay, what are we looking at first? Uh, the bracers. Okay. Well, when you hold them in your hands, take a good hard look at them, they are, the darkness is sort of fading from them. It was almost still touching them, sh shading them even as they were held in your hands, and as they brighten up, they look to be made of sort of dingy looking gold, and they have, each one has an octopus sort of figure on it, with tentacles writhing in lots of different directions, and they're a pair of matching bracelets. And at, even holding them in your hands, they feel very, very cold. And you hear strange whispers 
in your ears just for a moment as you try to attune to them and figure out what they do. You feel like if this was a cursed item, Toby would be laughing at you very hard right now because yeah, you've picked it up and touched it. Yeah, it does look like Cthulhu. And let's see, this is your spellcraft check. As you guys watch, Olbrin picks up the bracelets, tries them out, clamps one on his wrist, tries to do things, nothing happens. Clamps one on each wrist, and his arms immediately stretch out and disappear and become writhing black tentacles with tons of smaller tentacles coming out of the edges of them. And he reaches 10 or 15 feet away and then pulls them back and his hands and reshapes them into hands, which look like the blackest, darkest. You can't even see the texture of his hands. It's so black. And then they return to his normal drow hands, which are fairly dark skin, but looks normal. And it looks like he's mastered it. Well, that was creepy. Uh, that looks like something Gavilla would enjoy. <laughs> Help you scratch that uh, itch in the back of your back that you can't quite reach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Olbrin can explain that they have some minor cantrips in them, but really thinks they're mostly just useful for tricky handling of stuff. They allow a, the person wearing them free use of the cantrip Mage Hand, and telekinetic projectiles so you can throw things with them. And they f are so dexterous. Olbrin feels that he can almost see through the tentacles when he extends them, like he's like his eyeballs are on the ends of his fingertips, which are on the ends of the tentacles. And it's sort of a strange, strange sensation, but they do allow him to sort of look and feel pretty far away and with experimentation he can stretch them as much as 30 feet away well I wonder if uh, maybe Nomcath you could maybe pick some locks yeah or those traps give you range and dexterity Nomcath I mean this is cool but I don't know that's goddamn creepy is what it is yeah but imagine me being able to try and disarm the traps from 30 feet away <laughs> Oh, yeah, you won't even need to disarm it. You can just pop the door open from 30 feet and we rush in. This is a damn useful item. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take those. Okay. okay. As long as you think they're safe. Oh, no, he doesn't think they're safe necessarily at all. He feels whispers from a long dead god in his ear as he, as he uses them, but then there's no other ill effects. I mean, so far uh, my mind's intact, but, you know, keep an eye on your own. <laughs> I wouldn't sleep in them. Yeah, maybe we'll just use them for this tower, and, and then we'll do some deeper investigation in them. Nomcat, do you have used magic device? Yes, I do. All right, roll me a check of that, please. I got ten ranks in it. I bet you're pretty good at it. Uh, moderate. Uh, ten ranks gives me... Uh, uh, or actually, not 10 ranks. Excuse me. I think I have a total of 10. Hold on a second. Where am I going? Here. Very good. Okay. Let me check this. Yep, I got a total of plus 10 to it. Awesome. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's what I want. That right there. Okay. Nomcath puts him on, and you see him very quickly turn his arms into tentacles and reach across the room. And Nomcath, if you look in your inventory, there is an item called the Reach. It's right under your magical cookware, I think. And Nomcath quickly realizes that this they give him an ability only spoken of in rogue circles that only wizard rogues normally can exhibit called Ranged Leisure Domain. You may use disable device and sleight of hand at a range of up to 30 feet. And these items function as indestructible masterwork thieves tools that yield a plus five bonus to disable. Oof. Very nice. Very, very nice. That I like be handy. Yes. Those tentacles. They suit you. <laughs> and really? every time you use it, you hear a strange. 
A strange, unintelligible whispering in your ears. Cthulhu Fatagan. <laughs> yeah, you gotta make a sound effect for all his disabled rolls now. I, I'm going to. I think when you use the item. <laughs> That's actually built into the item. <laughs> nice. So, they, Domcath, you'll also sort of suss out that if you were an arcane trickster, they would allow you to cast black tentacles once a day. Yeah. But I'm not, so. Who needs that? Now, there's also a black cloak and a black ring. Uh, that'll do for both of these, Olbrin. You recognize that they are just pitch black versions. One is a black cloak of resistance, plus two, and one is a black ring of protection, plus two. Nice. All right, who needs a uh, plus two in their categories? I already have a plus two ring. I only have a plus one cloak, though. Now, Kath, what do you got on, bud? Uh, plus one cloak, plus one ring. All right, so you take both. Uh, I mean, you sure? I mean, what about Tokala? Where? What's Tokala going? Um, Tokala is wearing amulet, natural armor two, cloak resistance one, ring of protection one. So then, what's his AC? His AC is twenty-two. Okay, so we're the same. So we could take one each, and that puts us both up. Sure. So who gets what? Uh, you know, I, I'm, I, mean, my, I gets, just, excuse me? Doesn't he buff up a lot with his um, war priest, so his AC might be less of a concern? So but he doesn't he always. Yeah. Yeah, and he doesn't, he's not getting the shield extractions anymore. Yeah, there is there is that too. Right, his saves are probably not so good as yours, right? Well, I guess yours. You really just. Uh, my reflex save is great. I'm only plus two fortitude and plus three will. So. <laughs> oh I yeah. Think, I think so. Kala should be the opposite. You should have a high fort and will. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sure, that's right. I'm, I'm misremembering. Cloak of protection does to it does to the uh, saves. Um, Saves. I'm. I'm thinking other stuff. Actually, I'll take the. I'll take the cloak plus two, because like I got two crappy saves. Yeah, totally. Cool. And then okay. he can have the. He, he can have the the plus the the ring plus two, because he's the front liner, and I'm always trying to sneak around and not get hit. Okay. Sounds good. You now have a black cloak of resistance on Namkath, and you guys want the ring of protection on Tokala. Yep. Okay. Over it goes. And Chakala's got a ring of protection plus one that we'll take off here. There you go. And Nomcath, you can equip your unequip your other cloak, I guess. Yeah, there yep, you go. already did. Well done. Okay. And I might uh McGinnis might take that ring. Chakala's no old ring? Wearing it. Yeah, if no one's gonna wear it. Yeah. Yeah, if anybody see. else, if anybody else needs a plus one cloak of resistance. Uh, let's see, Olbrin, you have a cloak of resistance one, but not a ring of protection. McGinnis, I think you're also the other person who doesn't have a ring of protection. Don't forget to loot Elgin. Oh, that's true too. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll we'll take care of that here in a minute. <laughs> okay, so Takala's old ring to McGinnis for now. Yeah. Okay. That's for Nomcath. Thank you. There you go. So just out of curiosity, so if it, since this cloak material is so special, can I get any bonuses to, to, to stealth and darkness? Not yet. Not yet, okay. I mean, you made such a big deal about how special the cloak was, so... Maybe I'm not done being a creep about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like any good GM... All right. Uh, 
let's finish searching this place. Oh, you want to search this room? Yeah. Oh, there's a massive amount of treasure in this room. Three potions of gas, gaseous form. One acid flask. One acid neutralizer. One adhesive strip. One alchemical glue. One alchemical grease. Oh, so much fun to be had here. One Bunsen burner. Three planar alchemical catalysts. I don't even remember what the fuck those are. A tangle foot bag. Six goo tubes. A nanite canister. Analgesic tier one. Antibiotic tier one. Antitoxin tier one. A bandolier. A belt pouch. Candlestick. A candle. A coffee pot. Three chunks of firewood. You know. A flint and steel. A small alch uh, alchemist lab. Some marbles. A many pieces of parchment. A prosthetic hand. You know Eldrin would have loved that shit. A ritual <laughs> bell and some soap. Um, Eldrin really, really sad he's not here to see this prosthetic hand. <laughs> <laughs> do you lads, do you lads think that he would have, um, that uh, Zawad went crazy because he lost his marbles? Ooh. Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 that's a good one, partner. Oh, no. We recorded that. Hey, let's let's <laughs> give him a hand. Across the face. Oh. The hand. No, the prosthetic hand. Oh, right. Uh, that's a D4 psychic damage to everybody, right? <sighs> yeah, bad joke damage. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff here. Some of it could be useful later. Um, do we have a chest for us to grab the stuff out of? Yeah, it's over here on the right yeah. right wall. Oh, yeah, where I can't see because it's darkness. <laughs> there, there it is, I found it. Come on, open, there it goes. Look at all this stuff. Yeah. Well, I'll grab I'll grab the acid since I just used mine. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, that gaseous one of those gaseous form potions could be useful to me for scouting around. Actually, heck, I'll take them all. I was gonna say, might as well take them all. Yeah, that's a, yeah. that's a scouting kind of thing. Will we be needing that alchemist lab? No, and it's too big to transport. Fair enough. It exists in this room, although it can be used in this room if only you had an alchemist or an investigator who wasn't dead. <laughs> Slowed up our favorite dwarven pack mule here. I mean, a lot of this isn't worth taking. Well, some of what do you mean? Bit. I mean, like, the, bun the burner isn't worth taking. This is right. some great shit. You yeah, guys got an instant, instant travel to whatever mark you want now, wandering it out. So you can just sell every little thing. You know, the, the adhesive, the glue, and the grease could all definitely be useful at some point. I already have ooze grease, so uh, I'm, I'm good in the grease department. I'll grab the Tanglefoot, though. I like those. Those are fun. Actually, I'll grab the Grease, too, because that's good for escaping stuff. <laughs> yep. I'll grab a Nanite for me old uh, Inferno Pistol. Yeah. We have a coffee pot already. We'll put the uh, prosthetic hand with Al Al Eldrin. We yeah. That way. Yeah. Although this doesn't look like a look, doesn't look like a techie one. Yeah, but it's creepy. And yeah. So is he. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I've made a container for Eldrin's corpse. I'm gonna start putting his stuff in it. <laughs> How dare you make me do this much bookkeeping? Okay. 
Don't forget the soap. The who? <laughs> the soap. I believe there's there's some soap in there. Oh yeah, there's a ton of shit. With one there. use, there's soap that's been used one time. That has forty something re remaining charges. Yeah, forty nine charges. Okay. Scroll of Overland Flight, Smoke Bomb, yeah. Oh my god, next time somebody dies, it better be one of you that doesn't have that much shit. <laughs> Olbrin, you're dying next. Yeah. Take back my wand of a March person. Got a ring of protection for you there, El uh, Olbrin. See, this would be an awesome time to discover that Eldrin was like a massive pickpocket. Mm hmm. Olbrin should take the ring and maybe uh, who wants the, the nanite hypo? I have the better version. So if someone else wants to take it. Yeah, that's the one he modified. I don't know if it'll work like a regular one anymore. Oh, right. Uh, you can All make right. it work normally again. He has the needle pistol for that's what he was using to deliver stuff. Uh, someone should take the, um, his bracers are pretty cool. Because if someone has potions, they could do swift action potion on themselves. Oh, really? They're like a sipping jacket? Uh, kind of, I guess. It's so without the sipping, it's like needles. But... <laughs> Olbrin, you need a cloak of resistance or a headband of vast intelligence? Uh, definitely take the cloak. Okay. That leaves a spare cloak of resistance plus one that Olbrin's currently carrying. Jokala, why don't you take this Technic League pin? <laughs> right up your alley. You know what would be uh, be good. Uh, I'll take the eyes of the eagle. You know that does that helps with uh, finding stuff. Makes sense. There's also let's see who does not have a com set. I should have the, one. The new guy. <laughs> mm. Yeah, let's just keep this handy. Yeah, in case one of ours breaks or something. Exactly. Uh, the headband really wouldn't help me much, would it, Toby? Skill point. Skill point. There's no one in this party that uses int other than Eldrin. <laughs> yeah. That's true, it. right? It's a very valuable item. I'll take it for now. Then we can sell it, but... Make you better at crossword puzzles. That's right. Hell yeah. Crucial. Uh, we're 
We're gonna want that power cable. I'll go ahead and grab it. Um, there's more batteries for you, McGinnis. Yeah, shit. I don't even need them anymore, really. But I need. You should take them. I'll take them. I mean, they come in handy. I need Anyone... some for my shield. Uh, grab them then. Yeah, grab them. Anyone want to learn how to use this arc rifle? It's pretty nifty. It's it's cool, but it's just way too loud for me. Oberyn, you uh, you ever take a liking to uh, shooting off one of these things? Uh, he would have to spend a feat. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, should, we, we can't let this thing go. Well, we can hold on to it for now. We got we've got the wagon. We can keep it in there until in less than until we find uh, a use for it. I don't, I don't know that I have room to carry it with this grenade launcher on my back, so someone else can uh, grab the arc rifle. I, I can grab it for now. It looks good on you, man. You gotta, you gotta take a few practice shots. Uh, it's gonna bang into everything when I try to sneak around, though. That's true. Uh, I already I have should... a nanite hypo gun myself. I got a black one just like this, so... Someone else should grab this one. Let me double check something. Does about. require knowledge engineering ranks to use. Some equipment. Thought I grabbed one at one point, but I don't see it. I'll take it for some emergency healing type stuff. I'll take that and I'll take a canister for it. Okay. Maybe Oberyn can take Scroll of Overland Flight since he can probably cast it. Yeah, he can use that. No, no skill check even required. Uh, what about the Scroll of Technomancy? Same. He can, he can trigger those. I'll put them on him. All right. Yeah, I'll take all the scrolls, that's fine. Anyone want a smoke bomb? Uh, I've got one, but I can take a second. Yeah, I already got one. I'll go ahead and take these thieves tools. Stick them next to my other set. Really, we should just... At this point, it just should grab this stuff and... Take it with us. If, if nobody's got anything specific they're wanting, we should just, just grab the rest of the stuff. And yeah, we, can sort, we can sort it out when we get to the get back to the bar the, the, the party barge. Start loading up then. Let me know if you start getting uh, too heavy. Uh, with with uh, Takala's tattoo, I can carry a, a good bit without it sacrificing my ability to sneak around. Nice. I can carry quite a lot, it's just, you know, the practicality of all the bolts. Yeah. We need a bag of holding. Yeah. All the shit we're carrying, we need a dumpster of holding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take that soup. Uh, I like that soup. What's the chemilizer? Eh, just take it with us for now. We'll figure it out. I mean, it, yeah. I've seen it's used for, but none of us are really that good at it. Ooh, God. Leave the soap. Take the cannoli. Photography book, that might be interesting. I'll grab that real quick. 
Well, guess we can leave him in here for now. With all this alchemical shit, he'll like you that. Yeah. Leave <laughs> <laughs> him here with all this alchemical shit. And he turns in the ne into the next villain. Yeah, that's how I created this villain. <laughs> she was the previous party's investigator. Well, uh... The mission must continue. Yeah, we we've Looks got like a... like there's still a quarter of this floor we gotta explore. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta move on. We gotta... There's bigger things going on. We'll, we'll come back. Just remember to stay close to Alfred. Close to Alfred, yep. Yep. Alright, then that's... Alright. We've done the rest of the rooms on this floor, right? Yeah, we did the rest of the, this, this. We've cleared this floor. We left that one room behind just because it was so dark. Right. Oh, we've done the whole place? Okay. Yeah. That's not a good sound. No, no. Yeah, what the no. hell? Just doing okay. some backdoor sneaky GM shit. Right, you need so... uh, do you need some tend in there? You don't look like you're feeling Uh I'm Are okay you... for right now. You still um, down some HP? How much you down, Numkin? Um I'm a little down about a third. So, <laughs> yeah, that'll give me that's good enough. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> Give me another if you need it. Nah, it'd be wasted. Okay. Alright, let's go upstairs. Pardon me, dead bird. Alright. I'm gonna have to be without Eldrin to, or, uh, without Eldrin to back me up. I'm gonna have to be super careful on this. So... I'm going to start to, uh, uh, oh, well, <laughs> there's that back up. Okay. We'll, we'll start with, uh, great. Sp start, spot the trap. Okay. Um, yeah, you definitely see the trap. All right. The next stairway trap. Yep, so I'm going to disable device. I'll start with taking 10 to disable. Okay. Easy peasy. All right. Using the tentacles? Oh, of course. Yeah. You hear the whispering, and you uh, find it really easy with the thorn. Mm -hmm. Nice work, friend. It'll yeah. take me a little while to get used to that one, though. Yeah, yeah for I the agree. rest of you, Nomcath sort of, his eyes roll back in his head and just become black orbs of pitch black. You cannot see his eyes. Just, they're pits. His eyes almost look into some distant void dimension of nothingness. And then his arms become tentacles that stretch out like 20, 30 feet away, and you hear him slipping his tentacles into the locks and around the trap mechanism and holding this and pinching that and pulling that lever and click, clock, pop. It's very efficient and creepy as fuck. Yeah, it kind of makes my tail twitch, but I can deal with it for for the tower at least, and then I'll, afterwards I'll figure out if it's worth keeping. Okay. Upstairs we go. All right. Uh, I think we did everything on this floor. Okay. Yeah, because... The kitty cat was on this floor, right? And the bird's nest is over here. Yeah. Because they jumped down here, so... Yeah. We'll go straight for the stairs. Okay. By the way, the a minute, bu a minute per level buff still going... Uh, no. You guys had to sift through so much shit. Okay. Uh, 
I right. buffs people's strength. This was the this was the uh, uh, foundry floor, right? By the way, are we carrying Eldrin's dead body around? So far, no. No. I thought we left it in that room. Yeah. Yeah, we left it down there, but I think the token's here so that. Oh, he, uh, right. That, <laughs> <laughs> the player has vision. <laughs> right. All right. So yeah. Uh, well, let's let's start down here. Uh. Holy hell! <laughs> oh, that's right. I took something that increased my perception too. Forgot about that. Nice. Actually, now, between these two items, I actually have a pretty decent chance now. <laughs> All right, so I assume I find the trap with that. Yes. All right, we're gonna try. We're gonna go with. Uh, wait, which door are you at? Down here. Oh, sorry, that's the one you just came up. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. All right. That's so, oh, all right, it's opened. Never. In that case, what I would be doing that that's a perception check for traps for this hallway here. Okay. That 39, you do not detect a trap there. I don't remember if we've been through here to know if there was one. Crap. All right. Hang back. Let me go through here and see if if there's any Oh crap. I can't do that because of ah uh, I hate this tower. <laughs> Fine, come on. We'll have to go as a group and risk it. I don't remember if there's one in this area or not. YOLO. <laughs> we'll go slow. Yes, yeah. go off on your own, crappy will save man. Follow the passage to the north turns west and there is a another door like so is many doors is there not a light source over here cuz i'm only seeing nope it's pretty dark right here okay the All music right. that you've been hearing throughout this dungeon is very loud right here we noticed that yeah <laughs> all right so we will go with perception Checking the door for traps. There is a trap. I'm not surprised. I'll we'll go for the disarm. And I'll take 10 on it. Easily disarmed. All right. And now for the unlock. Easily unlocked. All right. We ready? Do it. Takala, so you want to get your ass up here? Get up here, boy. Wait, does Takala need any healing? He's doing pretty well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's in good shape. All right. Get him in front. And... Ha! -ha! <laughs> To the northwest, you well, first of all, this is a huge chamber, 50 feet wide from east to west, which you are on the east side. It runs at least 85 feet north to south. The first thing that greets you is a huge red rug of high quality. There is a doorway off to the right that is crackling with energy and lightning coursing over the top of it. It looks clearly very, very, very dangerous. And let's see. Let me turn this down a little bit. Uh, that's not it. Where's the music? Come here, music. Back off. Okay. There is continually playing music in here. You can hear it coming from the speakers over by the lavish bedroom set. There is a huge king-size bed with luxurious-looking fittings over the top of it, lots of big poofy pillows, a giant chest at the foot of it, a strange contraption that you guys will recognize as like a little boombox instead of speakers because you're familiar with Mayanda's bullshit from Scrap Wall. And there are tapestries hanging from the wall, paintings. Away south there is a desk with a chair in front of it, there are bookshelves, and another door to the south. 
And a window. And a window. And a door to the north, too, so... Yeah, the door to the north is the one that's crackling with electricity. And if you get closer to it, you can feel the energy crackling at you. Like, just for Josh's sake, this is what it's like when you get even a little close to the door. Oh, fuck's sake. Well, I'll say there's also that door right here. Oh, that door, too. Correct. There is a door to the northeast. All right. Find uh, the window. Yeah. All right, let me... Uh, before we go in here, because this place has made me so freaking paranoid... Someone has thrown Eldrin's corpse at the lightning door. <laughs> I wanted to hear the sound. <laughs> Alright, make sure there's no immediately immediately traps in the floors and stuff before we go wandering around. Okay. You don't find it. Alright. So, is that a hand? That looks like a hand right here. I think it's a dinosaur <laughs> puppet. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, it's a pair of boots, but it, to me, it looks like a little Tyrannosaurus puppet. Yeah, it does. Sock puppet. Hell yeah. Um, All right. That is Eldrin's new character, the sock puppet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the big reveal. One of you is going to have to have your hand up his keister the entire time. We're going to role play <laughs> this. It's actually, it's actually a guy in a green... I'm Socky the Dinosaur. Like a, like a lime <laughs> ninja suit, so all you see is his eyes. He thinks he's, he thinks he's in a green suit. <laughs> Oh, hi, guys! Oh. Don't you want to play with me? Oh. Has anybody got a ring of protection? Come, huh. come get in the bed. Now, here's a pic. Check out Discord. This is who his character is. I love to go first in the darkened rooms. Oh, God. Mankind. Oh, the wrestlers. That's terrifying. <laughs> yes, but it's a Tyrannosaurus Rex instead of a, an actual sock puppet. Yep. Socky. Okay. We're going to find him in the boiler room. Well, let's see what we can find in here. Right. What the heck happened here? The foot of the bed, you find fine bedclothes, a lovely tapestry, uh, some what looks like a really fancy outfit, some strange shoes, of course, there is the boombox, some batteries, and a pocket watch. Detect magic on the, the shit? Uh, the shoes... The Actually, the fancy outfit... Um, yeah, why isn't that loading right? Oh, because it's on Foundry 1. Okay, I'll have to get you guys a picture of it in a second. This outfit is... A long, white, flowing gown with golden trim around the chest, and it has a white hood and white cape that goes with it. And you look at it and you think, that's a beautiful woman's gown, but actually, you realize it would have fit Eldrin perfectly. It is made for a male <laughs> elf physique and adjusts its hips, wrists, waist, shoulders, arms, and chest for any elf or half-elf who dons it, if they live to this point in the tower. It always leaves the chest open to reveal cleavage just above the navel. The gown is affected by a persistent prestidigitation cleaning effect. No dirt or stain will ever stay upon it for more than a moment. It always feels of soft silk, never bunches up, and smells freshly laundered. It provides plus three resistance to saves and plus two enhancement bonus to con for those of elven descent. <laughs> if he'd been wearing it, he would be alive. Yeah. Uh, wow. Can can Olbrin wear it as a draw? Actually, he could, but he'd have to take off his sorcerer robes, which he's pretty attached to. Oh, right, right. These slippers are actually kind of cool. The slippers are also yeah, incredible. Cool. Uh, finally crafted, one. heavily worn around Fair the fast. edges. They show signs of repeated masterful repair work. Once a wearer becomes accustomed to them, they are able to move in surprising ways. You can slide hop, which makes your 5-foot hops can now be 10-foot hops if you slide in a single direction with no turns. Does not provoke an AOO, ever. Oh, wow, that's awesome. They allow the wearer to float in the air as the airwalk spell for a limited distance per day, though the movement can be broken up in 5-foot increments. The maximum is 5-foot per rank the wearer has in either acrobatics or perform dance skill. And the shoes also grant a constant bonus to acrobatics or perform dance of plus five. There's only one problem with those, and I'd have to have them modified so my toe claws could 
could get out through them or I'd lose my climb. That's possible. Those are pretty nifty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, need some modifications, but yeah. Well, actually, they they only work by sliding around, so I don't think you could actually do both. Yeah. Uh, because your claws are all about grip and traction, and these are all about the lack of it. Yeah, uh, that would be a problem. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind giving these a try. Yeah, I mean that works for you too. Because then, if someone's crowding you when you're trying to shoot, you can get away easier. Yeah, get get create a little space. And drop yeah, them. go for it. Go for it. Okay. Are they just like slippers? Yeah. yeah. They're actually really beautiful black and white dress shoes. <laughs> I like it. Okay. They're on again. Some cowboy boots right there. Yeah, they're not very cowboyish, are they? <laughs> That's right. I don't think anyone would talk shit to McGinnis with all the guns on his back. You call those cowboy boots? Uh, oh, no. the elven fancy apparel. Do you want to put it on Olbrin for the time being? Let's see. You guys should probably just bury Eldrin in it. Wouldn't that be right? It'll be worth some money, at least. It is worth a lot of money. Sorry, I'm back. Alright. Engineering roll to shut that music off. Okay. Oh, McGinnis is going to be new boot goofing, huh? Uh huh. Slipper goofing. <laughs> I'm going to be slip sliding. I'm going to be like MC Hammer. Uh, I was thinking uh, uh, foot footloose. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Alright, uh, well, you know what? I'm the rogue, so I'll take... Oops. Uh, no active GM in your scene. Oh, sorry. I'll be right back. I was shutting off the sounds elsewhere in the tower. Ah. I was going to say... I'm uh, back. Uh, you should be able to do stuff now. As the rogue, I was going to grab <laughs> the valuable stuff. <laughs> oh, the boombox. Yeah. Makes sense. Anything special about the watch? Um, it is just a pocket watch, but I think it does something for you. It's worth some money. Uh, where did it go? Pocket watch. Miniature clock, small enough to carry. Yeah, it's worth like 200 gold. It's oddly heavy. Uh, yeah, that's some interesting stuff. Uh, let's check out this desk in the, the bookshelves. Okay. Perception okay. check. Anyone who's searching. I have so many bonuses to my perception skill now. <laughs> Hell yeah. I have twenty points of bonus. Twenty points of bonuses. Okay. Jeez. Um. I mean, uh, that includes skill ranks, so obviously, but still. Okay, you guys on the bookshelves. There's a scroll of fog cloud, scroll of dispel magic, scroll of gaseous form, scroll of wind wall. That's all going to uh, Olbrun. Okay. I'll take them all. I'll put them on you. And the desk. Um, let's see. Get these deposited on him. There are some very valuable books laying around here. There is a book of war prayers. This leather bound collection of war prayers features pages of fine vellum. If you have a charisma of 13 or higher, at least one rank can perform. You can read aloud prayers from the book before battle to hearten others for the trials to come. Reading in this effect takes five minutes. The first time this is done in a given day, the reader's next bless spell has its duration increased to one hour per level. Bonus doubled to plus two, and it applies to all saves. This still counts as a morale bonus and does not stack with other morale bonuses or bless spells. 
Nice. That sounds like something for Takala. There is a moose hymnal, which includes a song about a moose encounter. Speaking of Tokala. Yeah, I just saw Um. Hello. Hey. Hey. You all right, man? I'm okay. I passed out at about 6.30. Oh, shit. Oh, I know that, because that's the last time I messaged my, my girl, and uh, she's pissed at me. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. But yeah, I'm here now. Well, you just uncovered a moose hymnal, so that should cheer you up. <laughs> yeah. uh, and there's a nice sketchbook in there. I'm yeah, I'm realizing that the moose hymnal includes a excerpt of a story about an encounter with a dangerous moose. Uh oh, that's Yeah, the moose hymnal is including the wrong thing. Okay. Hmm, weird. Okay. I'll fix that later. Uh, the book The Travels of Thalian Steed Volume 4 contains accurate drawings of common animal humanoid and monster tracks as well as notes on stride length, tread depth and similarly useful information the book gives you plus 5 circumstance bonus to identify a creature by its tracks although the use of shoes makes identifying many humanoids difficult or impossible Oh uh, yeah, the sketchbook is full of basically demonic porn. Uh, it's lots of scantily clad ladies wielding wizard outfits with severed heads on the ends of their staffs and uh, nipple tassels. Uh, yeah, scantily awesome. clad women with weapons, basically like Lady Conan the Barbarian. Red Sonia. It's full of smut. To call it, you're back. Yep, I'm here. We've decided on a grand funeral pyre for uh, uh, Eldrin. We're gonna stuff him in that room we found on the first uh, on the first floor and blow him up with everything. <laughs> That's a great plan. <laughs> We're gonna turn him into stars. A Viking funeral, as it were. That way he gets one he gets one last strike against the, the tower that killed him. And you should definitely take that book of war prayers. Yeah. Take a take a take a peek. Although I mean uh Ulfred could probably use it too. Yeah, I, I have only only have a twelve charisma, ah. sadly. So have to wait until I get an extra point in it. So I'll take it in the meantime though. We just gonna grab these books to sell? Yep. I'll I have less them. charisma than that. <laughs> ah Not in my book, buddy. I mean All right. take away my uh racial penalty and I could do it. I think there's a feat that lets you do that. <laughs> yeah. Alright, let me check this door here. In your trap? Uh, you don't... What kind of weirdo traps his own closet? don't see uh, any traps. <laughs> the guy with demonic porn. <laughs> I'm paranoid enough at this point. I'm not taking anything for granted. So still, I'll give it a shot. Um, is it locked? Uh, it has a latch that's thrown, but you can unlatch it from this side. All right. I will unlock it then. 
Pretty easy. You see a lavish bathroom with black and gray and white stone tiles on the floor, a sink on the left, and a tub on the south side of the room with a large, strange-looking staff leaning against it and a selection of scented soaps next to the tub. That's the second bath in this place. This He is truly demented. <laughs> well, I mean, you don't want to walk all those stairs just to go to the bathroom. Another tub? Yeah. A sick bastard, Ulfred. Oh, here, maybe this staff will be interesting. Uh, it looks like it's made of junk. It looks like it's made of probably 20 different pieces of broken tech that have been bolted or welded or, in some cases, wrapped together with wire and then tied in a knot. And it's about five and a half feet long with a strange sort of goblet shape in the top of the center with two big horns going around the sides that look like... Uh, pieces of old weapons. Parts of it look like they came from an arc rifle or arc pistol. Um, now, when you're saying tech, this is just more like just bits and pieces put together, not anything assembled that I would I could do with an engineering role? Uh, you can make an engineering check on it. You're pretty sure it has no mechanical function whatsoever. There's no place to put a battery. There's no trigger to pull. There's no no function. It's useless, engineering-wise. All right. Radiant magic? You cast tech magic on it? Mm -hmm. Fuck yes. 10 out of 10, you're practically blinded by casting detect magic on it. Holy fuck. This was, Olbrin thinks, as he, of course, picks up the cursed item, and is possessed by evil. No. Um, you pick it up, and you realize when you spellcraft attuned to it that it is a spent, like zero charges, staff of lightning bolt. Or it was. Based on the rune work on it, which is sloppy and overwrites old rune work maybe dozens of times. This is a staff that was built from recycled tech from gearsmen, weapons, devices, and there's nothing technical about it. It's a magic item. And it was a staff of lightning bolt, but it has been spent and recharged so many times. You think if you were to recharge it one more time, it might just fall apart. And uh -huh. while holding it, you feel strangely connected to another realm. It's unclear how or why, but you think it's been discharged and recharged so many times it's become permanently, elementally attuned to electricity. And Olbrin thinks that with practice, this would act as a planar conduit for him, allowing him to use your spell slots to cast Shocking Grasp, Lightning Bolt, or if you ever have a spell slot of this level, Chain Lightning. And if you already knew those spells as a sorcerer or wizard or anybody that can cast them, any spells such as that cast through this would be empowered. Interesting. Yeah. Touch touch your tongue to it like it's a battery. Took like it's suggests. nine volt, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We got a better place for that up here. You, you didn't see the north, north part of the room. And, Olbrin, you think that already, if you cast Mage Armor into the staff on yourself, and um, it's similarly expend another spell slot to cast Shocking Grasp, you can combine Mage Armor and Shocking Grasp. The duration will be reduced to one minute per level, but your Mage Armor would then grant you Electrical Resistance 20, and you could uh, use Attack of Opportunity with a shocking grass spell out to a range of 20 feet. Wicked. Oh, damn. The staff could technically be in. recharged, but the fear of doing so is that you would lose all of these other accidental powers. Interesting. Yeah, it's just kind of a quirky staff. It's got some benefits. I don't know. I may hold on to it for a while. Uh, 
Go for I mean, it. What uh, Master Zoud's been blasting us with lightning bolts, so hell, he has probably was his. This must have been his room. Probably so. Yeah. I mean, this isn't the source of his evil power, is it? We're gonna have to destroy this thing to get rid of him, do we? Um, I don't know. I'm wondering if whatever it is might be behind that door up there. Maybe. Yeah, that looks like it should be leading to the outside. Yeah, I mean, could be a balcony that he had some sort of ritual thing on. <laughs> oh my god. Man. Sorry, just testing. Just testing. Uh, let's see. This will actually be... Uh, there we go. Now your shocking grasp is fixed. So we go like this. Should right now, if, if you shocking grasp with the staff, there you go. 7d6 shocking grasp. Holy hell. It's the only shock spell Olbrin already knows. Yeah. So far. Yeah. That might encourage him to pick up some other ones. Yeah, well, this this will already allow him to cast Lightning Bolt. Yeah. Just because he's holding it with his third level spell slots. Alright. Uh, yeah, let's check that other door because I get the feeling whatever's behind that, that empowered door is going to be nasty. Or just getting through it's going to be nasty. So... Alright, I'm still being super paranoid after losing... This works. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so we are up by the lightning door. No, we're not. We are over by this other door because we figured this is this is going to be a huge pain <laughs> in the ass. I can't imagine why you think that. Okay, what's the perception checks? Oh, totally. Um, it has a trap on it. It does. All right. Huh? I will. Disable device. Success. Is it locked? Yep. Disable device. Uh, might have to spend more time on it. All right. I'm just will. I'm willing to take the risk on the, on the on the unlocks because it doesn't matter. It's not going to kill us if I fail. But you do need to disable your concealable thieves tools. They don't stack with the reach. Okay. But that is a success. All right. Let me. Where are they? There. Here's. There it goes. All right. Okay, you have more of sort of office workshop type area. This looks like a private study. It has desk and bookshelves. Metal hatches lead to the east and west. There's a thick glass window. Several strange black hoses lead from the door to a large machine against the northeast wall. Should I cut the hoses? Uh, not yet. Not yet. No, not yet. Um. I'm not as good with the smoke. Yeah, I'm not as good at this stuff as El as uh, Eldrin was, but I was paying attention to some stuff. Ooh, you darn Apparently know. not. <laughs> McGinnis. I only, have, I only have two ranks in it. <laughs> McGinnis, this machine pumps air. Maybe liquids. No, you're pretty sure it's air from some other place to some other place. You're not sure where it's connected to. The tubes run out of this room. But that's what it does. It's basically an air pump. Can it be manipulated? Oh, yeah. You could turn it on or off. Is it on right now? Uh, Yeah. It's emitting oh. a low hum and a little quiet kind of, kind of sound when you get really close to it. Well, it won't hurt to turn it off then. There you go. 
All right. Turn it off and we kill Eldrin's character somewhere, or Eldrin's new character. Somewhere. You see his. You're looking out the window. You see his corpse has somehow been catapulted out into the forest. And then it lands on top of like a really seductive bard that was coming to join you. No, just kidding. <laughs> Uh, well, we got this other door down here. Let's check it out. Is there anything interesting on this table or any, oh, any actually, yeah, notes that. or diagrams or anything? Oh, like hell that? yeah. There is what McGinnis instantly recognizes as a pack of the finest cigars in Numeria. Parodi oh, Amazetti. This will be our celebration. When we blow this tower, we'll uh, light these cigars and... These, and smoke up to the heavens. That's right. These cigars are created from fine tobacco and treated paper through a meticulous process akin to creating a magic potion. Lighting and drawing from these cigars requires a full round action to receive the benefits. But they grant you plus two grit or panache can exceed the smoker's normal maximum and extra points last until you rest. Smoke vision. Using these, you can see through normal or magical smoke as if it were not there. You're immune to blinding spells and effects, and you gain plus five insight bonus on perception, plus five insight bonus to initiative. These benefits last one hour. The cigar can be flicked up to 30 feet away as a move action, and if shot out of the air, it explodes in a 10-foot radius, dealing 5d6 fire damage and blinding those in the area for up to three rounds. DC 18 will negate. This negates invisibility in the area as a glitter dust. Holy shit. Oh, these are awesome. Yeah. And there's a scroll of Ray's dead. Hey! <laughs> Eldrin, I'm coming, buddy. <laughs> there's Maybe also now we're gonna have to give all this shit back. A potion of cure critical wounds, a potion of infernal healing greater, a potion of restoration, a potion of cure serious, and a nanite canister. Also, there's 360 gold in there. Uh, the chest at the foot of the bed had 4,000 gold in it. I don't know if anybody noticed that, but... Uh, we didn't, oh, so... Yeah, yeah. Mentioned that. You might want that. Maybe. All right, uh, well... I mean, we, we got the scroll. We can get Eldrin back. Anyone need nanite canister? No. I think you're the only one. And he doesn't even use it all that much anymore. Yeah, I have a shitload of nano canisters now. Same. Well, we can put some back on the barge when we get there. Uh, Elder will need that potion of restoration, though. That'll help him. Does that needle gun use nanites? Yeah, but I got a canister. Yeah, they all do. I'll, I only have it for emergency backup healing. The hypo? Yeah. Well, if I recall, some of them take care of some uh, status effects too, right? They do. Yes, they do. Yeah, I think it's a lesser resto, right? In the black hypo. Well, whoever has that should just take the extra nanite. I'll take it. Then just give me a second. Let me see what this thing is. Oh, Where I already is took it. Sorry. Oh, it's fine. Well, yeah, I, I can get it back for me at one point. And I have the white version, which removes disease. Yeah, lesser restoration. You're right. So actually, that's pretty important. Yeah, that would have been nice to remember about. Yeah? Oh, well. Yeah, I always forget that I have this thing, so help me remember I got a black hypo gun. If anyone yeah, I got one, too. Uh, sticky with it. Do we want to go ahead and get uh, Eldrin back uh, before we continue on? Hell yeah. I mean... Uh, yeah, all right. So uh, let's go back to where we left his body then. Someone want to grab these potions? Ocala, maybe? I don't know. I don't need. I, don't, I usually don't need a lot of healing. I could grab a lot of them already, and I certainly don't want the infernal heal healing. Oh, hold to... on to those ones. Yeah, I think you need those, Takala. Also, we should split up this um, gold. And get that other gold. Just give me a total. <laughs> I'm gonna go do this just so I can. We can do this all as one thing. I'm not. I'm not actually separating from. Eldrin, 
Just enjoy the sound of the lightning door. <laughs> yeah. Not bad. yeah. Well, the recording hears what your token hears. So you're uh. like making the recording nothing but. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. It's okay. Oh, so here we have. Was it, they said, like, they gotta go find Elder's body, so I was just putting them in the lightning. Cool. So they can't hear. Actually, let me do this. We got three, eight. How much gold is in that other chest? 4,000. No, I'm at the one at the bed, the one you guys are next to. Oh. Like three, like basically 400, I think. 365 and then Plus. 276 silver. So like... everyone's going to get 700 gold. Namcath? Hmm? I need you to make a will save. Well, no, I, I, I said, I specifically said this. I only moved, I was only moving there to get the number so we could do this division as one thing. He did, he did say. But did Alfred go with him? I'm, I'm said, we didn't, players didn't see that the gold was in there. Right. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of back playing a little bit and assuming that we split okay. it up and I, I moved my token just to get the number so we could do the math. Okay. And I, and I said that when I, when I went to move. Gotcha. Okay. He did. I'll, I'll second the motion. Alright. So on about 765 plus, you said it was like, what, 267 silver? 276. 276. And. Well, I think you mentioned that there were, you saw that gold in the other room. And about 175 silver. So 700 gold and 175 silver. And two platinum. All right, back to our fallen friend. Should, yeah. we ch should we check this other door first? Yeah. I mean, we can do it while we're here, or we, or we can hurry up and get Eldrin back. Either way, uh, I'm fine with checking this one door down here to the south if you want. Yeah, the the door yeah. to the east here. My drug supplier took all his finally realized <laughs> the implications. No My dealer <laughs> They killed my dealer Nomcath. <laughs> it is not trapped, but it is locked. Alright. And you can unlock it from this side with the lever. Alright, I unlock it then. Inside, you feel a rush of air go past you into this room and realize that it had very little air in it. It was almost a vacuum. There's kind of a whoosh effect as you do this and you feel pulled forward. And the room is very dark. Those of you with dark vision can see past Nomcath into there and see that there is a corpse at the far end of this little closet to the south. It's like a 20 foot long room. So we did suffocate Eldrin's new character. <laughs> yep, that's it. What's your third choice? Or which of your dead characters should we resurrect? No, it's... Probably Gavrillo again. This person's been dead for quite a while. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, well, Gavrillo comes see... back to life while McGinnis is back. The cloak, the strings. <laughs> I, I can't oh. see in the room because I don't have dark vision, so one of you guys ought to go forward and check the corpse. I'll take right. the vote. Perception check. McGinnis. Hold on. Wait for me. Wait for me. Right, right. Yeah, stay together, team. Stay together. Stay with Alfred. McGinnis. Omkath both bring some light in here. I don't know how to tell you this, but this is a dried up corpse. He's been laying here for a couple of years, and um, he's got something up his butt. <laughs> what? Get your hand up there, expected. deep. Uh, hey, Nomcast, fish that out of there. <sighs> really? Just like picking a lock. <laughs> Get your tentacles out. 
Whoa! <laughs> this campaign took a turn. Actually, sock puppet. Where's the sock puppet? Oh, he is a sock puppet. He's about to be Nomcast sock puppet. <laughs> I look straight at I look at straight at McGinnis, do the tentacles, and basically just rip it apart. Ah! Wow. Yeek. Let the record show that Nomcath described that action. I did not. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> I wash my hands of this situation, just like you should wash your hands, Nomcath. Um, you dig some items out of this corpse butthole. He is naked, and Ulfred can easily tell you that he uh, suffocated. And he had in his butt a Technic League pin which radiates magic, and you will quickly identify as enchanted as a natural armor amulet plus two. There is a very small, compact, six-inch long wand of disguised self and a very tightly rolled up scroll of non-detection. All of it all of smells a little dirty and musty. <laughs> in a six we can inch wand up his butt? We can sell that scroll. I ain't touching it. He had quite a bit in his prison pocket. It's medieval goatsy. Yeah. Is this a human corpse? Or it is. And a couple years dead, you think? Uh, Half a dozen, maybe. Six to ten years. Look like anybody we know? There's hard, currency on this guy. Hard to say. Corpse is dried out and kind of blackened. Uh, actually, no. It's fairly well preserved because it was in a vacuum. Um, yeah, lots of currency. Yeah, there is actually some money uh, scattered around on the floor in here, like it was thrown in here with him. Did you have to uh, pull each of those coins out? <laughs> How like long I did said, you I just, spend? I just tore it apart. He, he, he said it was a dry, desiccated corpse. I just tore it apart. <laughs> so it explodes like a pinata coins just flying everywhere. Yeah, we pretty hang much. It, we hang it from the ceiling and give somebody a baseball bat. I forgot we could use roll to do math. So there's the divisions. Oh, what so Olbrin gets uh, 140 gold. Not 194. So that's gold, silver, and then the platinum. And I, that is a divide by six because I, since we're going to be resurrecting Eldrin, I assume we'd give him his share. Hmm. We forgot to take his money. I don't think, Actually, yeah. I don't think he had much. <laughs> He did not. He had about 400 gold to his name. <laughs> Just been on a spending spree. All right, let's see. Okay. Who do you figure this fellow was? Uh, Technic League. Uh, I mean, that pin's nice, but I'm not going to wear it. Ulbrin? Yeah. Perception check. Hmm. Okay. Well, we're going to roll for it then. Olbrin, you hear a noise that you don't like the sound of right behind you. And we are going to enter combat, and you can all roll initiative. Well, I'm going last. Let's Not see. by much, though. The door behind you starts to swing shut, Olbrin. You're in the suffocation room. You are the nearest to the door. It's your turn. What do you do? I shift to the other side of the door. Oh, shit. <laughs> Okay. No, actually, uh, no, actually, I don't do that. No, just abandon them. Then you can have all their loot. <laughs> no, I just thought that. Uh, actually, <laughs> what did I? Actually, hear? that's not necessarily a bad idea because it puts you outside where you can where you can open the door again. 
What did you say, Toby? Yeah, I was thinking that. Not guys. What'd you I say, was Toby? telling you to get all their loot. You win. <laughs> Campaign over. Josh is the winner. We'll start skulling shackles, and everyone can just be mad at Josh. <laughs> what did I hear? You heard the door squeak, and you see it moving to shut. And then I shift to the other side of the door. Okay. Oh, wow. Party is hasted. You shift to the other side of the door. And you see the ghost of Zaud next to you as you appear. And he is holding out one hand as he waves a hand at the door. You hear it slam shut and lock. And he casts Phantasmal Killer at you. Make a fort save. Okay. Let's see. Uh, you did it. Your first roll is a success. Lucky you. Because he creates a phantasmal image of the most fearsome creature imaginable to you, which is probably one of your old drow overlords, uh -huh. playing on your own subconscious fears. And you, only you can see it. Um... Oh, you also have to make me a will save. Technically, the will save comes first. Hmm. That didn't roll. What is your will save macro? It's just WIL? Yeah, it's just WIL. You little bitch. You made both of them. Okay. You recognize that the image is unreal, and you actually don't have to make the fort save, but you do take even if the fort save is successful, you take 3d6 points of damage, so you take 11 points of damage from the spell. But yeah, that was uh, two chances for you to just die. I gotta right. try to open that door. With, with your skeleton key, right? That's right. Okay. Unpausing. All right. I'm attacking the door. Get it. You slam into the door and shred it partially open and you see through the ripped open door. You notice that this door has some extra seals on it. It's one of those fully vacuum sealable doors, but you cut through it immediately and you guys feel a rush of air because it's hardly perceptible, but as soon as the door shut and locked, the air started being pumped out of this room, but Takala quickly just rips it open and the air is flowing again. And, uh, yeah, let's see. You just tear part of the door open so you guys can see through this gap Zaud standing next to Olbrin. McGinnis. So those cigars I picked up. Yep. I can't really see. There's not a lot of text as compared to what you read. Really? Remind me. It seemed like, yeah. What the hell? Yeah, it just kind of says cigars with a very potent and intoxicating smell. What the hell? Oh, maybe they're not identified. Um, they're in your inventory somewhere, right? I'm trying to find them. Yeah. Or very, they, oh. very consumable. Now take a look. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, they were just not identified. It seemed like those had some usefulness. Full round action Wait. to receive the benefits. But you could do it. 
Adds perception, initiative. That lasts an hour. Yeah. I can see through smoke. That can see through smoke. Do I uh, have? Do I have? Do I think that will help with his? No, with that would help with the top. Smoke. Remember, the top floor is full of smoke. Okay. They would help there, but what he has. If he does what he has been doing to you, which he's already done something he's never done to you before with the Phantasmal Killer, but he usually has been dropping cloud kills and fog spells, which Gavrilo's Cloak lets you see through. So I don't think you need the cigars right now, tactically. Okay, okay. If I, I'll move up to the door and try and peek through and shoot him if I can. Okay, yeah. Uh, if you move yeah, between Ulfred and Tokala, you'll have an angle there. Okay, I'll take a take a pot shot. Okay, take a pot shot. You want to be right here. There you go. Now you can see him. That will hit. He takes reduced damage from being incorporeal, but justice does hit him as magic. Nomcath. The gap that Tokala has cut is not big enough for Tokala or Ulfred to squeeze through. But if you do me an escape artist while you're cruising through there, I'd let you, I'd let you move through. Oh yeah, easily. In fact, I'll give you a, an attack at the end of it if you want one. Yep. So I assume that basically my whole movement gets me through here, gets me to there. Yeah, but you can still swing right. once. Uh, and that is that my hasted attack or just single attack? attack? Yeah, it's not a full round. Well, that's what I meant. Do I get do I get my hasted attack after that? Huh? Because it has to be part of a full round attack, right? Okay. All right, just double yeah. checking. Yeah, yeah, that's how it works. All right, we will go. And I'm specifically attacking with silence. Right. In case you crit, right? Yep. Okay, uh, that does hit, and he does take half damage. You feel right. it pass through his incorporeal body. Ulfred, Tokala ripped a hole, but it ain't big enough yet. All right, if I smack on it, could I make a dwarf size hole? Uh, you could try to push through, but if you fuck up, you'll be stuck, and the door will be really well sealed. And then Tokala will have to chainsaw around you. No, I meant, um... Like, could I uh, whack it with a hammer to bend it out of shape? Uh, not very effective. That would take you a lot of hammer swings. Yeah, that's fine. I'll just cast... Um... <laughs> All right, I'll just cast Spiritual Weapon. Okay. That will definitely pass through the gap and attack him right away. All right, get him. Uh, since I'm, it, it's a full attack, but it's, I doesn't get haste, I don't think. Mm, should not. Yeah. Right. All right, let's see. That just barely misses that second one, but that first one does hit him, and it takes full, he does full damage. Oh, yeah. Good shot. Olbrin, he is adjacent to the left of you. Nomcath is adjacent south. For some reason, Eldrin's corpse is flopping around adjacent north of you. <laughs> okay, I need to do this real quick. Uh, Enrique, you should be able to roll initiative. If you have switched um, control. How do I do that? Um, Let me see. Should I just log out and log back in? No, we can do it in here. Let me fix this, though. Your tokens named the wrong thing. I did it. I did that. Okay. But that, that my toolbar at the top still shows Eldrin. If you, down to the lower left-hand side, uh, where it shows the player list, if you right-click on your name, yeah, there you go, then you drop out, and then it lets you select a new character. Uh, Got you. I'm switching you to the new one. Okay, and you are up here. Okay. So. Judging by the name, this is not a character that will benefit from <laughs> headband of intelligence. Okay, let me make sure your token has vision. Sources, good, good, good. 
That sounds like a low intelligence barbarian name. Well, he needs. So we... yeah. yeah, I'm gonna change his size for a reason. Oh sure. Because remember, he's you're uh... very small right now. Yeah. Yeah, we still have so a bit of work to do with that stuff. Um, but otherwise, right. I think you're. Yeah. You guys are not going to be able to see him yet. Even if you see his token, you can't actually. Very difficult to spot because he's very small. Okay, so Olbrin, top of the round. Actually, I'm going to give you one uh, action from last round, Eldrin. Krokta. Oh, okay. Um, like end of the round action. Yeah, so you'll just see anyone's paying attention. They'll see a little animal scamper into the room. That is and about then when it stops, 35 feet northwest of you, Josh. And then you'll okay. see it and it'll stop moving and then it kind of fades into the background again. You don't see it anymore. But then uh, suddenly in front of you, a, oh, I saw that on private. Change that. I can reveal that. Flaming sphere. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yep. And place it right on top of Zal. So yeah, you just see a little thing come in, kind of fade into the background, but then all of a sudden a flaming sphere. Okay. Do uh, slash D, and I think it does two D six. Uh, yeah. I think so. Let her rip. Slash D space two D six. Perfect. He takes it. You see a a ball of fire appear right behind Zao, like burning him in the back. So far, he hasn't reacted to it. On his turn, he is going to move away from it, though, and hit you with one oh. of his favorites. So that was 3d6, so I'm going to add one more. Was it still my turn? Oh, it is Olbrin's turn. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, do me another d6. I hit one. <laughs> Zao will still be adjacent left of you, Olbrin. Okay, what's the macro here? Uh, what's the macro for shocking graphs? Tell us. Brr, great question. SG? I think it is SG. Holy fuck, bud. You turn and hold the crackling Ooh. staff in your hand and touch the ghost with it. And you guys see electricity crackle down both of Olbrin's arms into the staff, and it seems to be amplified. You see a much greater burst of electricity come out of it than Olbrin has ever unleashed before, and it shocks the hell out of Zaud's ghost. It does a lot of damage to him. Uh, and then I shift again, and I get the fuck away from him. Um, you can either go back into the suffocation room or farther to the northwest, towards the exit door where the little furry animal just dashed in. Um, you could go up on the desk. <laughs> you could go a little. You could five foot step. To, well, no, there's a bunch of piping there. To no, get past I'll out, you pretty back. much gotta go northwest. I'm going to shift back in with Tukalo and um, Ulfred, in case I need help. Okay. You shift back in. You are next to McGinnis, Tokala, and Ulfred, and you can still see Zaud and Namkath through the door, through the hole in the door Tokala made. Cool. Yif, yif, motherfucker, says Tokala. <laughs> All right. Zaud shifts. And puts a wall of force across the room directly in front of him, between him and Namkath and all of you and any hope of exit. So call him. Okay, uh, I will finish cracking open this door. Okay. Do me one attack. Mm. 
Success. The door is completely ripped apart. I'm just going to delete it, in fact. Wide open exit to this room. No hope of it being a suffocation chamber. And you've got a uh, move action left. Are wall of force uh, visible? No. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> wall of force. Let's just make sure. Uh, invisible wall of pure force. Cannot move and is there not easily destroyed. Immune to dispel magic. Mage's disjunction can affect it. Uh, disintegrate destroys it. Can be damaged by weapons and supernatural abilities, but it has a hardness of 30, which even your chainsaw is subject to. And a number of hit points equal to 20 per caster level. So a fuckload of hit points. Uh, so Tokala runs and slams into an invisible barrier right by Namkath and is probably very confused. Bonk. Oh! <laughs> Uh, Toby, just for my keeping track, how much uh, shift movement have I used? You have done, let's see, from here to here. Uh, and then you've used a total of 35 feet. Okay. What do you think, McGinnis? You just saw Tokala crash into an invisible barrier. Yeah, I mean, I think he, honestly, I think he would take a shot and see if he can get him. Okay. But I assume he can't. So. Yep. Your bullet slams into the invisible wall just over Namcast's shoulder. In fact, you see it hit the wall. For a second, you can kind of tell where the wall is, and then it's gone, and the, frag the bullet fragments kind of scatter around the room. He's got some kind of protective barrier up. I can't get through it. Okay. Um. I assume this wall is is going all the way to the ceiling. You can't be sure. It's some weird wizard shit. All right. So I'm going to do this then. Because I don't know much about magic, but I do know one thing. Most spells require uh, vision to target. They do. So and obviously it's not going on the other side of the wall, but at least will give us a little bit of cover from his spells. Okay. Um, and then I will, for my movement wise, I'm going to go over uh, here, climb up all the way up to the ceiling and kind of feel that wall up to see if there's any gap at the top. He, he can feel it with his hand as he moves along it the entire time. It's It covers this whole room. Yeah, and all the way up to the ceiling? Oh, yeah. All right. He has like 10 square foot per level, and he's big boy level. I just I wanted to make sure there was always a chance I might be able to get oh, some yeah, no, go over it. No, that's that's legit. Nomcath, you know, Nomcath sussed out the spacing of the wall. It's everywhere. Yep, all right. It's all the way up. We can't get over it. I, I, I don't know how we can get past this. And that's my turn. <laughs> okay. Um, would Krakta have any inclination about this wall? Spellcraft. Going... Does he actually have that? I don't think he does. <laughs> he oh, does not. He didn't buy it. Never mind. Uh, maybe I'll change that later. Okay. I did realize I didn't realize this with the smoke bombs. Mm. There is a downside to this. There's a DC 12 fortitude save because it uh, for, against nausea. Oh boy! Or sickened. <laughs> so Tokala and Namkath both have to make a fort save. Ulfred too. Actually, McGinnis and Ulbrin are in the area too. All right, I bought spellcraft. Ulbrin is nauseated. So with 19, do I have any idea if this force wall just keeps going and going? Nauseated like, for one round and sickened for three. Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, yeah. There goes your person that could teleport you through the wall. 
Let's see. Uh, sorry, what you I ask? Never, I, I never looked at the full stats of the smoke bomb and assumed <laughs> it was just a standard cover bomb. <laughs> uh, uh, I was just wondering if a 19 spellcraft would tell me if I think this wall is going to, like, if, the, if I... If the floor or walls were to move, is the invisible wall just going to fill in where those are? Uh, like, does it just keep extending until it hits something? That's a difficult question for a person with no ranks of spellcraft. Well, I, 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 oh, you want to switch one? I'll let you switch one. <laughs> yeah, I switched one. I switched okay. one because I okay. realized that was dumb not to today. Okay. So what's your spellcraft check? I missed it. I got 19. I okay. It. You think this is a very high-level caster? You think that was a very high level spell and you think it probably expanded out as far as it's going to and probably will not expand or contract based on anything else changing. So yeah, you could uh, open up a wall or break a wall to get around it. Okay. And he's going to use the move action to move the flaming spear over towards Alza. Cool. Can, uh, let me see if he makes his save this time. Negative. He takes the damage. Okay. And then the main action. This underneath the wall right in front of Sokala. Okay. With the intention of making it soft enough that they could squeeze out from under it if they wanted. Let's see. It's off in earth and stone. Uh, this is a second level druid spell. All natural undressed earth or stone in the spells area is softened. It says 10 foot square area to a depth of one to four feet. Uh, clay stone becomes soft chopped. clay that is easily molded or chopped. I don't know if that's soft enough to squeeze through though. You might not want to do that because it says here magical enchanted dressed or worked stone cannot be affected in this entire tower oh, okay. is magical worked stone and you would know that. Okay, sorry. Then Never mind, it doesn't do that, and the city does it. Okay. Um, it's out. Whoa. So, and how do I uh, make it actually put the description of the spell when I cast it? Uh, yeah, we'll have to fix that up. Is this a ranged touch, or? This... Let's look it up. Druid range stuff. medium, 100. Hell yeah. Foot and... Invoke the mystical power of the moon to drive the target into a mad bestial frenzy. If the target fails its save, days for one round, dropping head items as its nails, teeth, elongate, and sharpen. Target gains bite, blah, 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 blah. Oh, God, I hate, to hit then, you with, I hate to hit you with this again, but it says target humanoid yeah. creature, and he's not a humanoid creature. He's a oh, it doesn't ghost. count as humanoid? Mm -mm. He's right. a ghost. He was a humanoid. I thought he was like a, a ghost. ghost humanoid. No, not physically. He's an incorporeal ghost. <laughs> All right. Uh, fuck. Well, and my guy's just confused, and he just sits there thinking a lot while the <laughs> while the fire goes. You, no, it. this is a brand goes. new character. This is a whole new thing. You can have another second to think about it. If you got something else up your sleeve, you want to try. Yeah, I'll just do this on. Okay. Okay. Alfred, your spiritual weapon attacks, and then what do you do? That hits. And hits. What can I do here? You can't see him anymore. You're effectively blinded, but you hear your spiritual weapon still attacking him out there somewhere. Right. I'm going to try to throw down a, was it Holy Smite in that general area? All right. Put it where you're going to put it. Oh. And that's a will DZ. He makes his save, but I think he still takes half of whatever damage is for that. Yep. Why are descriptions not showing? I don't know. Name. I'll take a look at that later. And draw down a holy power to smite your enemies. Only evil creatures are harmed. That is him. Uh, evil creature. Okay. Evil outsider. No, he's not an outsider. 
So. So you do 48. Yep. And he halves the damage. He's not blinded, but he definitely takes half of 48. Sweet. Okay. You blasted him. So that was like 30 damage one turn. That's not bad. Yeah, that's great. Olbrin, can't see him anymore, and you're barfing. If you five foot hop south, you're kind of out of the smoke effect. Okay, I'd do, I'd do that. Okay, cool. I possess you. Um, anything else? See, I don't know if there's much you can do. You could take a potion, I guess, but you're not really very hurt. No, I know. Okay. Hard to drink a potion when you're throwing up. True. Yep. I just try to keep my guts in. Okay. You can't. You barf. He moves back a little more. And... He drops on the party. Yeah, right about there. Big old fireball. Oof. Reflex saves, please. That gets through the force wall? Yeah, he puts it on the other side. Doesn't it, like, come out of his hand and fly? Over? Yeah, I might have to do something different. You're right. Uh, point your finger. Determine the range. Yeah, it does have a travel point. So hang on. Yeah, he's going to have to do something else. My bad. Apologies. I'm sure that's like the least of our worries. I was gonna say. Take a fireball. <laughs> yep, and still, instead he's going to have to use a cloud kill. So oh, that's so much better. Fort DC 21. Yeah, I was, trying, I was trying to go easy with the fireball, but McGinnis called me on it, so there you go. <laughs> wow, Olfred, no. Nomcath, no. McGinnis, you made it. Tokala made it. He's got a monster fort save. Uh, Olbrin, you are in the... You are in this one. Okay. Did mine roll? Uh, no, not yet. Oh, wait. No, you did it. You failed. My bad. You did it. Oh, okay. Right away. I did it. I failed. You did fail. Uh. Okay. We know and love Cloud Kill. Um, you guys are not in the auto kill range. So you take 1d4 con damage. If you made your fort save, you have the damage. So the con damage is two. So if you failed your save, like some of you did, let me go over Olbrin attributes, damage, two con damage. So, uh, I, I'm i not super uh, well read on how spells work. Protection from evil communal says that it's touch. If I cast it, then can I walk around and touch everybody and give them it? Uh, yeah, I mean, if they are within touch, if they're within an adjacent square when you cast it, they get it. If they're not, they don't. Okay, so that everyone would have to be around me. Yeah, you'd have that. you could stand between Olfred and Nomcath and get the three of you. Or you could move nah. down next to McGinnis and get the three of you down there. That's not real. I mean Yeah, I guess I would just leave Nomcath. Cause I wasn't gonna give it to Olfred. He's already got his other thing. Yeah, up. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um okay. I guess I'll do that. I'll move down here to there and do that spell.
Okay. McGinnis, Olbrin, and Takala now have their own individual protection from evils. So you don't need to be near Ulfred, which is good, because you're not. Just to be safe. <laughs> mm, smart thinking. Thanks, Takala. Prudent. Oh, oh boy. Uh, he looks just going to run hacking and wheezing. Trying there you go. get out of the cloud. You do. South end of the room, you're out of it. Anything else you want to do with your turn? <laughs> Nothing comes to mind. Okay. That was basically a five foot hop for you since you're wearing the slip sliders. Zoop. Okay. Uh, if you think of any potion you want to do, go for it. Domcath? All right. So that dissipates. The smoke does? It's all Yep, it's only good for a round. Cool. And I don't see the cloud kill, though. Yeah, it is. Let me put it back here so you can see it. Hey, what happened to my hammer? Uh, Yeah, I think I cleared all tokens, so let me give you a little hammer Fair token enough. that's right here. So... Crap, this is going to suck majorly. Let me just do this, Alfred. So, he put that there, so... And then it's obscured, so I have absolutely, actually no idea where this cloud is going. Or how big it is. Yeah, the cloud kill is actually going to drift down into the suffocation room. Looks mm -hmm. like it's moving that way. But my point is, I don't, because it's in... Uh, oh, yeah. The, For you, it's pretty disorienting. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't I, I can't meta and say that I know that area down there is clear. Mm, I don't think that's too meta for him because he's been cloud killed. This is his third cloud kill. He generally yeah, has, understands how big they are and that they move. It's obscuring, though, sure. so, and I don't know where the center okay. of it is. Sure. But that, that's how I see it. Sure. You know... If I was down here, yeah, I could I could understand it. But where I'm at, I don't know where it is, honestly. And there's okay. <sighs> there's nothing I can do with the wall of force. There, there's nothing I can do. I think. I mean, this is it's your call, but you're being too hard on him. He's fought this wizard about four times. You have a pretty good sense of what he's done and will do. And you think at the very back of the suffocation room might be a pocket of clean air. You don't know, but you suspect if there is one, that's where it'd be. Okay. And I can, I can basically use the, uh, the wall to guide me through it. Yes. So. Yes. Just, he's like I said, you guys have fought this guy n yeah. a number of times and he follows a kind of a sort of formula each time. The phantasmal killer yeah. was strange, but otherwise well, I get that. It's just, I'm just I'm taking trying to take into account the, the obscuring yeah. effect of the cloud. Oh yeah, and trying to and trying to play within that, you know. Yeah, but at this point you're like the army private who's been tear gassed by the drill sergeant four times. You're like whatever. <laughs> okay. So I will move down there, and that's pretty much all I can do. Okay, you find a small pocket of breathable air down here with McGinnis, and Olbrin throws up on you as you walk by. Yep. Oh, it skips me. Well, my bad. Your turn, sir. Not that I can do anything. Flaming Sphere still up? Yeah, it is. Okay, so I'll do the damage. Move that. Let me see if he makes his save this time. He does not. The garbage reflex save. Okay, he takes 11. And I think, you know, it's okay if I, I cast a spell that doesn't work on him because uh, Crocta, this... Doesn't know ghost that well either, so he's just going to be trying stuff here. Okay. If you have knowledge religion, you can make a check on him. Uh, actually, don't. Okay. He'll go ahead. don't think it's going to work, but it's magical, so maybe it Ooh, works. Uh, I think you 
yeah, we need to set that up with a range touch attack. Go ahead and do a range touch attack for me. And what is mud ball damage? I gotta fix this so spell description show up again. Single ball of sticky mud launch to the enemy's face. Range touch attack hits. Target is blinded. And then at the end of each round, beginning of, oh, sorry, beginning of its turn, you can try to do a reflex to shake off, shake off the mud. I don't think there's any damage. Okay. Um, um, so I need to do a ranged touch. How do I do save, that? Negate. Uh, you can go to your combat tab and just hit a ranged attack from there. Uh, not good. Uh, yeah, his touch is 16. That will miss. All right. Well, and uh, yeah, that's it. It's flaming sphere damage, though. Now, Wolfred. Terrible damage. That is terrible damage. He's extremely hurt. Oh, um. Oh, I Alfred, think... your your turn. Yeah. What do you want to do? Sorry. You're still standing in the cloud kill. Right. So, looks like there's a pocket of fresh air to the bottom. And the... hard to Can see, I... but you figure, yeah, same thing as Nomcath. You kind of understand how cloud kill works. Right, and I, I, I've probably felt him brush by me. Mm -hmm. Maybe. So, it's pretty subtle. Fair enough. I will move out, and... I can do a wall of fire. Or, you know what, I'm gonna just uh, be safe for us and do a wind wall. Okay. You do a wind wall like through this area, so the parties you blow the cloud kill out of the parties area. Exactly. Okay. You do it. Everyone is now exempt from the cloud kill down here. Olbrin, you and the okay. party are all crammed like sardines into this suffocation chamber, standing on this man who you were giggling about dying in here before, and now. You if a sudden fear that you might die on top of the man you made fun of. The enemy is 40 feet northwest of you. You can roll me a spellcraft check. You understand that he has put up a wall of force, which is impenetrable to most things, but can be seen through. As, just, as we just discussed, you know that a fireball will not pass through it, but uh, spells that just occur at whatever range can go through it. Breath weapons and spells cannot pass through a wall of force in either direction, although dimension door, teleport, and similar effects can bypass the barrier. You know you can shift through it. Gaze attacks operate through a wall of force. Uh, yeah, you can't cast disintegrate or mage's disjunction, so those aren't options. Um, you are right next to Takala, Nomcath, and Ulfred, so you could shift people through it if you want. I really don't have that much movement left, unfortunately. Um, ah, the wall is 25 feet north of you. All right, if I shift across the wall, who wants to go with? Yeah, I think you can afford to take one of them, maybe. Yep. Me, yeah. because I can do the ghost touch thing, and I'm right after you. Totally. Yeah. All right, Takala, we're going to go up to the wall and shift across, and we're going to hit him at the same time, okay, buddy? Got it. All right, here we go. Okay. You, um, oh, do you need to move before you shift, Josh? Yeah, I've only got 45, which will allow me to go, like, 20. Feet. Okay, then you're going to delay until Tokala's turn. How much do you have left? I have, yeah, 45 feet left. Ah, that's fine. We're just going to call it uh, before... But it, it takes twice the movement, so... Right. It's me and Tokala only got like 20 feet then. Technically, you need 50, but the way this is going to work out, otherwise it's just going to be really dumb and disjointed, is you shift, you and Tokala both, 20 feet north. One, two, three, four. Immediately puts 
Takala on the other side of the wall, and you barely on the other side of the wall. Is there anything else you want to do with this turn? Uh... There's still a lot of smoke in this area, but you can just kind of vaguely see where he was 10 feet or so ahead of you. See where Zav was? Uh huh. Okay, so I wouldn't be able to hit him with a touch spell? Uh, roll me a perception check. Oh, it's Scramble. Do it again. Yeah, you think you see a sort of figure at the edge of the smoke? How long does that smoke grenade last, Nomcat? Do we know? It was only one round. So it's, the, the, it's gone. The, yeah, it's been gone. You can see him. Round. You can see him fine. You ID him. Okay, how far away is he, though? <laughs> Ten feet. Okay, so it'll be a turn. Okay. Um, I hit him with that then, since I can't move. Always a good choice. He dissipates. You're out of combat. <laughs> we're not out of we're out of combat, but we're not out of trouble. Uh, we've got the cloud kill and the wall of force still. Ulfred defeated the cloud kill. The wall of force is still in place, but Takala and uh, Ulbrin are on the other side of it. So you guys just have like a min couple minutes of waiting. So Takala and Ulbrin see by the door a little like six-legged squirrel thing on the floor and then it slowly starts to get bigger and shift up to like a six foot seven uh four-armed creature standing in front of the door looking at you so Kali, get your fucking chainsaw handy what the hell is that <laughs> what are you friend or foe i am Krokta. he is going to look at tokala and cast Guess what? Yes! I'm still taller than you. <laughs> oh, you're bigging it, man. So yeah, he's going to extend his arm and say, I am Krokta. And then raise his arm in front of you. Cast calm emotions on Tokala. Oh, shit. Make a will save. <laughs> I am untouchable. I am uncalm. <laughs> My my will is of iron. You have made a fatal error. Oh no. I come in peace. What? Like inches from his face and took all the like stops for a second and says, Well, you did help with the ghost. Put down your weapon. There's no need. Takal's going to look over his shoulder at Olbrin for, like, the signal. <laughs> when he looks over his weapon, his shoulder behind your back, <laughs> this guy's going to do something. Let me see. Uh, he's just going to try to calm emotions again. Can I do it more than once? Uh, how many do you have per day, or is it a... That's a... For my archetype, I can burn whenever I want. Oh, it's spontaneous. Yeah, if you got more spell slots. <laughs> I think you're just going to make him so even more answer. angry, though. It's, well, he's tried that time, but whenever Takala looked away. Okay. <laughs> Damn it. As I said. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> There's no Why need. Why are you casting spells on my friend Takala? He's too angry. And what happened to the cute bunny? I was coming oh. out here to pet it. You mean this? And then he, so it's actually a different animal. He does turn into a bunny when you say that. Not not the animal he was before. And then he just shapes shifts back. It's very a form. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a very um, interest, or that's a very uh, fascinating talent you have, friend. You are a friend, no? I don't know. Well, any enemy of Zaud is a friend of mine. Who is Zaud? The, the ghost that just tried to kill us all. 
Ah, uh, yes, yes. This is his. This is his tower. Why are you here? Yes. If you don't know who this is, mm. it's a long story, but I had a vision. A woman from my past was here. I've been following you for some time. Seeing that you seem to be good people. That's why I revealed myself. I'm trying to find someone here. At this point, the wall of force drops. Namkath, you feel it dissipate in your hand. McGinnis, you're close to it also. You can tell it's gone. Hell is that thing? Does he see anyone else look stressed out? Because if so, he's going to cast calm emotion on them. <laughs> they all look pretty stressed, but they're they're calming now. They're a little wary of you, and you think if you cast any more spells, they may be. Uh, I'd say if you lift your hand to cast another spell, you're going to get something from me, and you're not going to like it. <laughs> and I'm going to tell my friend to call her with this nasty chainsaw to go for it. Be calm. I'm very black calm. one. <laughs> Let's not get racist. You know, his uh constantly saying calm down. It's like when you so, tell your woman to calm down. Yeah. <laughs> never tell someone to calm down. It has the opposite effect. All right. So he when Olbrand does that, he does start to raise his hand to try to do uh, calm uh, emotion. Uh, so uh, if you guys want to try something, it's fine. Ooh, make a save, Crocta. You make it. You guys are just lobbing. <laughs> but do I calm down Olbrin after that? Yeah, Olbrin, make your will save. Happen. You guys are just lobbing fucking debilitating spells at each other. <laughs> it's ridiculous. McGinnis, you're sitting there probably with your gun still in your hand, looking back and forth as these two waggle their fingers at each other, but nothing's happening. <laughs> ping pong match with no ball. Did my will save roll? Uh, do just W I L. Oh my god! Holy oh, fuck! Of course. You've never felt such a mind resisting you to call. Are all so angry. <laughs> you got six. You got six rounds of make a will save, so you got five more to go, bud. Oh yeah, sensory overload sucks. It just fucks you every <laughs> oh, round. All right, let me try another one. <laughs> See when I fail it. You're bound to fail it. Eventually, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I have something I've been waiting to use if he fails it. Oh! Yeah! Yeah, yeah oh. buddy! <laughs> One more, right? One more? No, that should be five. Oh, right, was it six one. rounds, I thought? Yeah, six rounds total. Oh, it was it six? Okay. Oh yeah. Okay, so you guys are impervious to each other's spells. You might as well be a team. Puny. Wizard duel. <laughs> Shit is this is the most boring wizard duel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, they just wave their hands and just be like. Then they get they get frustrated and just start throwing out magic missiles. Fuck, this one works. This one yeah, always works. charges with a spear. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Enough. We okay. Must save these for that. And uh Takala points towards the electrified door. Mm. All right, let's pause there. Yes. And we'll continue this bizarre introduction next time. <laughs> Very nice. All right, good times. Thanks, uh, and then you can discuss how the party's going to use a raised dead scroll on a character that doesn't want to come back to life. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that was a nice uh, red herring there, or whatever. Well, you could, just before you use the raised dead scroll, you could have Ulfred cast speak with dead. There we go. And ask, like, I would allow you guys to do that without calling it meta. You can confirm with Eldrin. Or we could just raise Eldrin and he can be like, man, I've had enough of this shit. I'm out of here. And he just That's also possible. Let me kill him again to get his loot again. Yeah, he probably. Yeah. I mean, up to shit. you guys. 
Up to you guys. I mean, I'm definitely playing crop dot, but. Takala would tell the group that there was like a 50 50 whether or not he was going to come back last time. So just to like put that in their heads that not everyone wants to come back. That token right, of Croctel no, looks thanks. so weird. All right. Yeah. See him again. <laughs> yeah. It's really hard to find a yeah. Kasafa that's not like all decked out in tech. Sure. There is That's one that looks sort of wizardy that I thought you might like. I don't know. If you want to show me it, I'll take a look. I'll it. find yeah, it. Yeah. So is he a druid? Oh, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, he's a druid. Nice. Yeah. Uh, did the ancient guardian druid. I haven't, um, I haven't looked at that one. But yeah. druid, I really like druids. Let's see. Yeah, There's I've been wanting to play one for a while. I'm putting him in uh, Iron God's chat. Uh, so the thing is, my I know it's this art, but my archetype, like I can't use anything metal. Right. And like all these are metal. I'll, I'll show you one that I found. There's another one that's like a tribal looking one. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, it's tough because there's so many Kasatha and Starfinder, but not that many. Yeah, they all have some type of tech, except for there's two pictures. I'll send you the other one right okay. now. Okay. Might be a little better. Okay. Yeah, what do you think of that one? That is, I'm pretty sure. From Iron Gods? <laughs> it looks like the dude that got killed, yeah. In uh, uh -huh. under torch, yeah. I mean, it's fine choice. Like it's. Yeah, even that would be kind of a weird token, though, probably. But eh. yeah, that looks that looks more monk than druid. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that that was my. There's like one other I thought maybe if I cropped it, but it's kind of blurry. Well, yeah, perfect art doesn't exist for this kind of. Yeah, my first online game ever, I played uh, Half Fork Sorcerer, and there really wasn't any good art for it, so I just got a picture of a, a floppy wizard hat and used that for my token. Uh, nice. Oh, yeah, I thought about I almost was going to use that guy in the purple robes, but he has, like, that tech right on his face, so it's just, like, it doesn't work. That could be it. that guy... Yeah, the guy, the last one I put, if I just cropped them around the shoulders and head, yeah, then it's like green and druidy. <laughs> um, but the guns, yeah, well, work. maybe those aren't guns, maybe those are salad shooters, <laughs> as long as they're made out of wood, yeah. Oh, they definitely are fire seed pods, they're yeah, those I... organic guns from Exus Guns. Oh, yeah. Those were awesome. It's too bad you're not a female Kasatha that uses bow, because this one's pretty cool. Well, that so that's also I was reading supposedly female Kasatha. You can't even tell them from male, so that's the right. same pervert. Hell yeah! Put boobs on it. I <laughs> mean, a lot. I, of... I think that one's kind of easy to tell. Yeah, but that's just that's not uh, you know what sort of like more canon. Yeah, yeah and, I and this so one... I was actually considering uh, Crocta might be a female. <laughs> This one with the chainsaws is, I think, another Iron Gods NPC. So mm. nice. Uh, yeah, this chick's got some stuff, but this is not too techy. This is only minorly techy. Yeah, I don't want it to look like a girl though. This one's got an iPad. Yeah, it's not gonna do. Look at this guy. Yeah, that one's kind of roguey. Yeah, we're just limited. Just limited. Most of the ones in Starfinder have fucking lightsabers and iPads, so. Yeah, I found this one that's like oh, yeah. a little bit not as techy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I don't like that little like frilly thing on the waist, though. It makes it look like a maid or some crap. Hmm. Yeah. They have just kind of put some boobs on some of these. 
No, it doesn't really make yeah. sense. Then I have plenty yeah, of Kasatha well, skeletons. Yeah, those are great. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll just draw like a stick figure. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, it's uh, man. I want to like say stuff about like the character and backstory, but I guess I gotta wait until next time. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, you guys can start hashing out stuff like that, but you should let it reveal itself through the yeah. story. Yeah, that's the plan. I'm just impatient. Hence, Eldrin dying. <laughs> <laughs> I like this guy this too. Way, we don't have we don't have to give back all his stuff. Now in canon... Uh, that's what I was going to say. All that dividing by six was unnecessary. Ah, uh, yeah. In canon, Kasatha in Starfinder especially always prefer to wear a face mask of some kind. So even if it's mm -hmm. not functional, he might wear it just for cultural reasons. Oh, yeah. He definitely... I mean, I was envisioning him with like the red thing around his face. Yeah. Like in the picture. But, but yeah, they definitely cover their face. Well, if any of these is close, I'm willing to throw it into Photoshop and like try to delete the tech from it. Uh, I think the one that I like the best of these that doesn't have tech would be either or probably that one with the green yeah. mask. Yeah, if I just delete the guns, I feel like his armor is nature -y enough looking. Because it could be like stone or something. So yeah, sure. just whiting out the guns probably would be fine. Sure, we can do that. I'm just going to put, you know, probably some dildos or hentai tentacles coming out of his hands instead. Yeah, that's that's all I ask for. Normal, normal stuff for this campaign. Makes sense. Oh man, is this, this one's interesting. It's a totally different art style. Very assassiny. Uh huh. Yeah. That's how I play my druids. Just <laughs> I, mean, a, I could with all the wild just, shape and just a bush rogue. <laughs> that actually would be kind of fun. You just they think you're a squirrel and then boom. <laughs> I well, that's <laughs> yeah. he was with you guys. I mean, it's up to Enrique how, how much he tells you about how much he. Yeah, knows, that was the. He was there for a bit. That, that was that role where it sounded like six things going at once, I think. That was the uh, all the perception checks, right? Yeah, there was a lot of... I mean, he rolled a decent stealth, but when you're a tiny creature, you get like plus eight or plus 12 stealth. It's huge. Yeah, and I put a spell on him to get a bonus. Uh -huh. So he was basically mathematically impossible to see. At one point, Olbrin rolled a natural 20 perception and nearly saw him. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean druids are stealthy just by way of wild shape. Like wild shape is amazing. Um, so that'll be fun. I think druids are cool. And yeah, if you guys like in canon, like Ulfred does speak with dead. You ask Eldrin where he is. Eldrin will either tell you or he won't. But Eldrin very much knows where he is and what he's doing. Yeah, and he's. All right. Very Have a good like, time. Likely gonna say no thanks <laughs> to a raised dead. Yeah, he's having a good time. Hanging out with Tokala's wife. Whoa. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't think Tracy's paying attention. Too far. I will kill your ghost. <laughs> I have a ghost. <laughs> oh, true. I will. Uh, that'd be, I think that would be great. Your he brought his ghost back and then Tokala killed it. Yep. Ray's dead so I can kill him again. Again, again. <laughs> again and again. How many do we have? <laughs> this is getting really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one time would be really expensive. <laughs> All right. Well, with the uh, acquisition of the the reach on Nomcath, you are, unless you unless you go rushing through an area, you are done getting hit with traps. 
he can mathematically take 10 and essentially skip every other trap in the dungeon. Nice. Which is why I was yeah. very sad when you guys blazed past this room like four sessions ago. <laughs> I was like, oh, and fuck. Tortured ourselves. I was like, they're going to hate me for all the traps that I now get to roll that I wouldn't have get wouldn't have got to roll with once you found those. A little bit. Yeah. A little we bit. Sorry about we that. We went past that room three or four times. <laughs> it was dark, though. It is like the only room we skipped of everything. Oh, no. There's right. some others. Right. There's several skipped areas. All right. Well, I'm going to go, guys. Um, feel free to, if you want to, like, I guess there's not really much backstory to do right now. It's just alien dude popped up behind you we'll find out more next time yeah let's i want to i want to wait until everyone is present and able to participate yeah. in that well mcginnis is out next week i think right is he is he fucking camping again my god <gasps> what a loser oh <laughs> this <laughs> you to, to her he says that sometime in november i remember him saying All right, guys. See you next week. Yeah. All right. See you. See you, everybody. Later. Wake up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Later. 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 Good job, Josh. <laughs>